Okay. So let's start. I had a presentation an hour ago when I talked about why PTP is changing the game uh, on the software side and how we can, if we rely on the clock, we can reconsider some of the design decisions from the past and we can build much more efficient systems. But not everything is ready yet on the software side. Even if you have PTP, there are challenges to get the precision that you have on the network card or the clock on the network card to the software layer. First, quick introduction or just refreshing what, refreshing your memory, what the network looks like in a modern data center. We have this structure that is more like a graph than a tree where we have on the top, the grandmasters, one or uh, a couple of them. We have spine and fabric switches. We have rack switches and in the racks we have this ordinary clocks in each of the nodes. We can disseminate the time across this network and can get to hundreds of nanoseconds to the ordinary clock. But when we land on the individual machine, getting this time to the application is not an easy task. When we tested in the lab, we found that uh, even though the time is very precise on the NIC, uh, get, uh, the application rarely can rely on the numbers that are getting uh, from the time API. If you go today, and ask what the time is, you usually run in the user space. And in the user space, you have certain amount of memory that's shared between the user and the kernel. And in the kernel, you have a driver or the kernel itself updating this memory. So when you check the time, you, when you get the time, you're not doing kernel transition. That works fine. Uh, but when we talk about time in the range of hundreds of nanoseconds or microseconds, that's quite unreliable. Our tests show that in certain, certain level of um, load on the machine, you can see variations in the range of milliseconds. So the question was, how can we do this better? How can we propagate the time to the application? We looked at a couple of different options. First, uh, we invested in uh, PHC to Sys. This is a separate process that uh, uh, works like a servo and tries to set the oscillator on the node to be um, in sync with the NIC. And it's doing uh, everything that uh, a normal servo will do so the oscillator on the node is not changing, but the clock that the OS represents, is the OS clock, the real-time clock on the operation system is changed based on the NIC. We've had uh, a few tests that went to the catastrophic failure. And catastrophic failure means the time went backward or the time jumped in the range of seconds. So that obviously was not the best option. And it is not great great experience uh, when you cannot rely on the, the, the values that you're getting first. And second, it doesn't give us access to the clock uncertainty, to the, um, to the difference that we know exists in the PTP protocol and it's delivered in the PTP protocol between the ordinary clock and the closest boundary clock. And we also want to extend this with the new TLV that Michelle talked about we want to extend this to know on the ordinary clock, what is the clock uncertainty in respect to the global time. So we started looking at different options. How can we do this better? At that point, we, uh, we discovered the PTPC's offset. And PTPC's offset is an extension or a relatively new API on the PTP side that 
today supported by uh, all the hardware vendors and the drivers specifically on the hardware uh, the drivers that are coming with uh, the, the modern hardware and the goal of the ptpc's offset is to mitigate to some degree the uncertainty that happens between the nic and the application and it works in 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 a way that um, is trying to predict what the time now is so when the application send the request i want to know what the time is the kernel the driver that's running in the kernel is going to do number of uh, is going to 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 run number of samples number of probes that generate uh, a set of samples these samples are based on the time that is uh, reported by the system clock and the time that's supported by uh, reported by phc so when we go to the phc we also see some variation and when we pair this phc clock with the system clock on the application there we need to run filters to remove the outwires and trying to to accommodate uh, to, to calculate what is the offset now between the system clock and the nick the clock on the nick once we know this offset we can go again to the system clock and getting the time from the system clock uh, also comes with the assumption that the system clock didn't drift too long, too much between the time when we did the samples against the phc and now and when we get the system clock system clock again we can apply the offset that was calculated the offset that we calculated between phc and the system clock that is not bulletproof unfortunately our attempts were first focused on how we can use the TSC. This is the timestamp counter that the CPUs and x86 CPUs provide today. But we faced some other difficulties there that made um, impossible to rely on TSC. I think the future looks more like how we can make TSC accessible and uh, not just accessible, but uh, being useful in this scenario. So when we go to the driver, instead of getting the user system clock, uh, sorry, instead of getting the system clock, we get the TSC on both sides. And then when we get TSC in the user mode, we can apply the offset that we learned. But today the PTPC's offset extension, the API, uh, the, the API that driver supports does not use TSC, it uses the system clock. Utilizing this approach, we were able to get to the application with very high level of accuracy, the time that is on the PHC. But that's not all, because I mentioned in the previous presentation that we just, the time is just not sufficient. We need to have the notion uh, propagated, the notion of clock uncertainty propagated between the ground master and the application. We need to know how far, uh, we need to know the range that guarantees, guarantees that the time, the real time is somewhere, the universal real time is somewhere in this range. That requires carrying the notion of uncertainty between the grandmaster or even from the GPS down to uh, every, through every transparent clock, through the boundary clocks to the ordinary clock. And when we have that, we need to bring it to the application level. And we need to bring it in a way that allows correlation between the time that we calculated based on the PHC in the NIC and the error bounds that we got. To be able to do that today, we need to do, uh, we need to change the existing uh, demos, uh, uh, the demos on the um, Unix environment. Uh, we need to extend the PTP protocol with additional TLVs, and we need to um, create a library or APIs so the applications can use these values in transparent way. That is something that uh, we believe uh, OCP can, and uh, the top project in OCP can help a lot by investing in uh, standardizing the, the approach, uh, starting from the grandmaster, including the TLVs, standardize how we communicate with the uh, driver 
to get the, all the information that we need from the NIC and correlating this behind the scene so we can expose to the application's uh, standard API and libraries that allow getting back this uh, information as a range of clock uncertainty and uh, being able to manage this uh, in case of uh, short, um, short intervals of unavailability of the system. That, that requires changes on multiple places. And I think uh, if we work together in OCP, uh, we can build open source solution that can carry all the value that we get from PTP up to the software layer so we can reliably build architectures that utilize the clocks and improve the efficiency of the systems. That's all for me. Any questions? Let me check online. No, um, there are no questions. Ahmed, you may have some comments. You're on mute, Ahmed. Do you have any comments? <clears throat> so uh, w one thing, one thing I may ask, uh, Georgi, uh, like uh, speaking of like things uh, going to user land uh, with like these technologies, uh, what are like let's say now the the biggest hurdles? I would say the biggest hurdle is extending uh, the standard solutions like PTP four L and uh, uh, providing um, and and extending or expanding the API that the network drivers provide today. So we can do the correlation, we can, we can capture the PHC with a reliable source on the, NIC, uh, on the machine. So later we can do the, we can calculate what the offset was at the time when we're in the user space. We need to, to, to change um, the API for the driver and we need to change PTP4L or whatever demon we use uh, to be able to combine these two things, actually three things, the PHC clock, the system clock or TSC and the clock uncertainty that comes from TLV. In terms of, uh, uh, let's say, relating uh, events in user land, that, that they don't basically go to the port. They just happen basically on the same machine. Do we have approaches? That happen, uh, yeah. Can you, can you give an example? Events that happen on the same let's machine? Say you, have, uh, you have, let's say, two instructions running on the, on the same machine. Uh, do we have a good way to, the, and they're both in, in user land. They, they never basically make it to the, to, to the network so they would get like time time stamp or something what yeah. do we have today to basically so today the most common approach is tsc this is the timestamp counter that um, is available on the uh, cpus but this counter although looks like a very stable uh, oscillator it is not directly related to nanoseconds or milliseconds it's it's a some kind of counter that you need to use a uh, uh, transformation to be able to say how many nanoseconds uh, um, something, uh, the duration of, uh, of event or the duration between the time between two events. And there is no easy uh, and transparent way to uh, convert TSC to, to nanoseconds. There are a few solutions, but they require additional kernel modules or changing the kernel. Um, maybe we need to, to work uh, as a in OC, uh, OCP to, to, to get to the point where this is exposed from the kernel in a standard manner. Uh, maybe we need to work with Intel to, to learn how to do the transformation in a reliable uh, way between different generation of CPUs and different gen, uh, generation of the hardware. But uh, the system clock looks like the most uh, stable source of uh, time and it's not sufficient for, it's just not 
as good as the PHC clock in the NIC. One follow-up question, like how can we, let's say, or are they, is there any relationship between the TSC and PTM? Um, no, not really. Uh, TSC is, uh, my understanding uh, is TSC is a clock inside the core, inside the CPU. Uh, do we have different TSCs in different cores? Um, I, I'm not sure. But TSC is inside the CPU and that's why it's so stable and that's why uh, it is so easy to get the value of the TSC. It's a one instruction. So you can run it in anywhere and it's a one instruction that gives you back the TSC uh, counter. Uh, the, the other stuff is how we communicate between different uh, areas on the machine uh, and um, the, the PCI bus is uh, extremely important, but it's unrelated to the TSC. Yeah, maybe like as a follow-up, would, uh, would a combination of the two help, you think? Oh yeah, yeah, it is absolutely necessary. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, bringing the value from PHC to the user mode requires a path that has a constant latency or a latency that uh, we can measure and subtract between the two ends. And one end we have PHC, on the other end we have instruction that's running in the user mode. So we have to have a good way to calculate the, 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 the we have to have a correct a correct calculation. Otherwise, uh, we cannot carry uh, the, the precision to the user mode. Thank okay. you for these comments. Yes, Thank you. we're good to go with the next presentation. Thank you, Georgi, for this one. Oleg, over to you. The demo. Do you want to start okay. now, or we yeah, want we to? Can, actually, we uh, can start. We can take advantage of it now because, again, this is more like a for demo, and uh, we will have like the like different things we need to show. So I'm expecting a lot of uh, technical challenges will come along. <laughs> so we'll have let's say till we can just like early kickstart like a bunch of things we can show, and then they, they will be like I don't know. Uh, more of like formal stuff like slides or something Oleg will go through uh, in like basically in eight minutes, but we can start from now showing like a bunch of things we have. Okay. Um, let's take a few minutes to